Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to, I guess, kind of another season of the Innovator's Mindset podcast. I don't want to call this the official first episode, but it's the Thursday episode. And typically I do three questions on this day. The reason I've been doing that over the years is to really highlight great teachers from our past, great administrators from our past, but also to get people to think what they've learned in their own career. And I'm going to be doing that this year. But I really wanted to do more solo podcasts. I really wanted to have this one-on-one time, not just with the audience, but weirdly enough with myself. And this is kind of maybe like a little bit of a Mindset Monday. Maybe not. But this last year, I've been doing these three-question email or three-thing emails. And the reason I've been doing that is just to get really back into writing, finding what I'm really interested in, what is connecting with me at the moment, it can be really easy to get caught up in what will the audience want most and what will get me the most clicks, what will get me the most views, what will get me the most attention. I've never wanted to use these spaces that way. I've wanted to use them as a process for open reflection and hopefully through the process, I can help somebody. And maybe that somebody is me. If we're being honest, a lot of times when I write these three things, the emails, people will reach out to me and say how much of an impact they've had on them, how much they've resonated. But the reason I write them is typically there's something I'm going through. And I don't think that every single email reaches every single person the exact same way. But all of us seem to be going through similar things at different times. And I think that's why I wanted to start to do this. Just what am I going through? What are some things that I've been thinking about? How can they help other people? So this podcast today, I wanted to maybe do a few of these to do some of these three things and just kind of look back at some of these emails and I've connected. And and the one I'm going to talk about today is really three things I've learned to be grateful for over time. And if you want to read a book on gratitude, check out Lainey Rao's book. I'm going to actually link it in the description. Lainey, I love you. She's absolutely amazing. She is just amazing, her focus on gratitude. And when I talked to Lainey, one of the things that was really important to me is that when she wrote her books on gratitude, I'm not saying this, please don't, I hope this doesn't sound negative. I just didn't want it to be a fluffy book. It was really important to how it connected to learning. And so she did a really great job on how this connected to learning. And she actually shared this And I'm going to read it to you because I asked her, can you share with my audience how gratitude is great, uh, impactful to learning? And this is what she shared to me. And I'll, you can actually, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see the text in front of you. You should watch it on YouTube. And if you do give me a like and subscribe, I'd love to get more people seeing these videos and connecting. If you find them useful, please share them with other people. I know it seems kind of insignificant, but I'm just hoping that someone will see this a lot of times. Um, this will help somebody, but they'll never share it. And if it helps you, it could help somebody else. If it doesn't help you, then I understand why you wouldn't share it. So this is what Lainey wrote. Gratitude isn't just about feeling good. It's a game changer in how we learn. When we're grateful, our brains release dopamine and serotonin, those feel good neurotransmitters that not only boost our mood, but also help us focus and stay motivated. In fact, practicing gratitude regularly, regularly isn't just a one-time mood boost. It actually rewires our brains. This process known as neuroplasticity means our brains can adapt and create new connections throughout our lives. So when we practice gratitude, we're literally training our brains to be more resilient and positive. This just isn't about feeling happier. It's about transforming the way we tackle learning challenges, turning them into opportunities to grow. In short, gratitude does more than just make us feel good in the moment. It shapes our brains in ways that enhance how we learn, make us more receptive, motivated, and resilient. Learning with gratitude isn't just about acquiring knowledge, it's about building a mindset and disposition that can help us learn better and enjoy the journey. So that's what Lainey shares. I think it's really powerful. Check out her book. I'm gonna link it down in the description down below. But I wanted to kind of focus on things, three things I've actually learned to be grateful over time. And I wrote this in a a, a blog post and this will kind of set the tone. I, I wrote about how gratitude, how it's had an impact on me specifically. And I wrote this, or maybe things are different, but I'm seeing things in a different way. The more gratitude I practice, the more grateful I become for the things that I already have. Is my life better or am I more appreciative? Probably a little bit of column A, but a lot more of column B. 
And I think why that is really important to kind of share and to connect is this idea of how gratitude really helps you bring better things into your life because you start seeing things differently. And that's what the impact that it's had on me. In, in the morning when I wake up, the first things I do is I try to really kind of just c capture my own thoughts and think about things that I'm grateful for and the impact they've had on me. And then I vision what my day will look like. And those two connected really kind of set me up to appreciate what I already have, but also what I'm going to do to make my day successful. And it doesn't always work, but it's help me more than it's hurt. That is definitely for sure. So the three things, and I want to keep this short. That's kind of one of my focuses for these Thursday podcasts is they're a little bit shorter. People are busy, but maybe just a little uh, motivation, a little boost. So here is the first thing that I've learned to be grateful for over time. And the first one is the people have helped me in any way to find success, even in the smallest of ways. I, I am a stubborn person. There is no doubt about it. And I work extremely hard. I'm extremely disciplined. This is something that's really matters to me. And over time, you get a little frustrated because you feel that sometimes people take credit for your work, credit for any success that you actually have. And that's where the stubbornness comes in. But as I've grown over the years, I start to think about these little moments in my life, um, people that aren't necessarily mentors, but have mentored me, if that makes sense, to get to newer heights that I didn't necessarily want to give credit to. It is really easy to think, you know, I've got here, I've got to where I'm at today on my own. But if you truly think about just little moments you have in your life, even medium moments that people have connected you with you way, saw something. I'll, I'll give you an example. My assistant principal at the time, Cheryl Johnson, I remember I was presenting something to our district. I was asked to be one of the Covey presenters in our school district. And I did it. It wasn't something that I, I normally had done. And I remember her saying to me, and she was saying, like, she, I'm telling you, she would never just give me a compliment if it wasn't felt warranted. And she said to me, you're really good at this. Uh, you should probably present at some point in your future. And I never really thought about it, but it's, it did something for me in that moment that gave me a confidence in trying something new. And now I, I speak. I'm actually doing this right before I take off to go present in Milwaukee tomorrow. So it, it is kind of weird. And like little moments like this, and it's not even people that mentor you. It's the other day I was taking my daughter out, Clea, for... Uh, pizza and the hostess at the front was so complimentary of my daughter she was just making her smile making her day better and her making my daughter's day better lifted her spirits her spirits lifted my spirits and then my spirits lifted the people I connected with so those little moments that we have with people they can make such a, a huge deal in our lives and it's one of the reasons I always say we need to connect with our students, with our staff as they're walking by in the hallways, whether you teach them or not, whether you work with them directly or not, because little interactions that are positive just spread throughout the day. And here's the other thing, little negative interactions, they also spread too. So I always ask, which one do you want to become contagious in your community? So those little moments that we have with people can really make a difference. The second one is something I've, I've really learned to... Um, appreciate over time it is the challenges I've had in my life. That's a hard one to say because it's easy when you get caught up in something is to ask, why is this happening to me? What have I done wrong or whatever? And sometimes, you know what, if you, something bad happens, you can probably, I know I've been able to say like, oh, oh okay, that's why. <laughs> that's why this is happening to me. But the reason I share this, and I think it really resonates with me is as I've been doing this marathon training and, um, you're probably listening to this on a Thursday. I can't January 2nd, 3rd, 4th. And I'm running the Disney World Marathon January 7th. Wish me luck. I, I just want to finish. It's going to be really hard. But um, I've been training for this really um, disciplined over time. And through this process, about halfway through, I got a pretty serious hamstring injury. And I was so frustrated. I was so upset because I was thinking this is going to set me back so much further. But then as I went through it, I really kind of looked at the moment and said, okay, how am I going to become better because of this? And that's something I don't think I've been able to do, you know, years earlier. So I felt, hey, why did my hamstring get hurt? It's because I'm not really stretching. It's because um, I'm not really taking care of myself. I'm just getting out and exercising, but I'm not actually doing the things to 
really get myself in a good space. So now, even though my hamstring's better, 100%, but probably 98%, it still has a little bit of pain here and there. I have implemented stretching routines, roller routines into this, and that will be something I do proactively moving forward. So instead of just saying, this is such a setback, this sucks, and I'm just being mad about it, stepping back and saying, how will this make me better? What will this do to improve? And so professionally, there's times that I wanted a job, wanted a you know a speaking opportunity, and I didn't get it, but then something else came my way. And it wasn't because it just came my way out of the blue, it's because maybe I was frustrated and I said, you know what? I'll show them and having, you know, um, maybe a little bit of chip on my shoulder to improve myself, not to get back at somebody. Cause I think that can actually be detrimental. Uh, typically revenge is actually, um, hurts the person most who's dishing it out than the person receiving it. Not always, but most of the time, cause that poison is like, uh, I can't remember the exact saying it, it's actually, someone's I can't remember where this came from that revenge is like drinking poison and hoping the other person will get sick or die or whatever so I think you know some of those hardships actually pushed me to get better saying like what am I doing that I didn't get this opportunity actually my very first job weirdly enough that I got I was from a phone call because of an interview that I I didn't get the job and I called the person and I said hey I'm new to the profession, I want to get better, could you give me some advice to improve? And that call actually ended up getting me a job with that superintendent because they were so appreciative that I wasn't just like, oh, this is not, that sucked that I didn't get that job and just, you know, dwelled on it. I said, okay, I didn't get the job from the interview. What could I have improved? And that willingness to learn really benefited me. And it wasn't you know, something that I was just doing to pander to the person, I legitimately want to get better. So that led to a lot of different things in my career that if I didn't actually lose that first job, if I didn't actually not get that interview, and this my wouldn't my career path, my life path would be totally different. So sometimes the doors that close on us, they actually open way better doors later in the future, if you're willing to go through them. If we just say like, why is this happening to me, then you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so The last one, a thing I'm grateful for now that I haven't been in the past. And this is going to be a weird one. Just bear with me. Myself. I am grateful for myself. I'm grateful that I can actually do this podcast and talk about things that uh, areas I've grown that I've gotten better at over time. Because I don't think I've been able to do this um, over the last few years. I'm grateful that I look sometimes at myself and where I've come from and that when I was at my lowest, I didn't give up. I kept going. I didn't always do the the best I could in the moment, but I did what I could. Megan Lawson, she shares this. One of my favorite quotes from her book, uh, Legacy of Learning, is that if all I have is 50% and I give 50%, well, I've actually given 100% of what I can give that day. And so... I just don't give up. I keep going. And the reason I share this is not to brag on myself, but for you to brag on yourself. There's a lot of times where we look at where we are and we're really frustrated because we haven't got to where we want to be. But you know that kind of adage, it's been shared around quite a bit, that right now you are probably at a point in your life that you wish you would have been at. But we don't necessarily stop and appreciate that. There's things I always want in my life that I typically haven't been grateful for in the past once I received them. Because we get this notion that we always need more, we always need more. And I've learned to just appreciate my own growth, my own development. And I think that it's not about being arrogant about it, but being proud. Being proud and that pride you have in your willingness to grow tends to actually lead to more success later. I'm reading this book from Ryan Hall and it's Run the Mile You're In. Great book, love it. And one of the things that he said is when you're running distance, the worst thing you do is focus on the negative in the situation. So if my body hurts and I start focusing on the pain of my body, then 
it just starts to overwhelm you. So what he does, and I've started to do it, and I'm gonna tell you, it's been working for me, and I, I love saying this out loud because it hopefully it just becomes more and more a part of who I am, is that focus on things that bring you joy. So when I'm really struggling, I don't focus on the pain, I focus on seeing my son Marino run to me. And that really is powerful. That brings me joy, and not only does it actually get me through the pain, it kind of gives me a bolt of energy. So I'm not saying you should all be proud of me too. Yeah, maybe you should. That's not the focus. It's you need to focus on what are you proud of in yourself right now. It doesn't mean that you've achieved what you want to achieve. And I'm going to tell you this. Even when you achieve what you want to achieve, you're not going to, probably won't be satisfied. You're not going to be like, okay, I'm done. You, you, always, you always want to continuously grow. Once we stop growing, that's when we start dying. That's what I truly believe. So not physically, right? So I'm, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So <laughs> just thinking about that, what is the thing you're proud of? Doesn't mean you stop growing. It's just that you take a step back and think about where you've come from and where you are today. And that's going to fuel you for where you can go. So I just want to share some thoughts to you. You can actually see the link. I don't read the email. I read parts of it. So you can actually connect and see the email. I've linked it down below as well. But um, thank you so much for joining me hope that the mix of some guests, more, some reflections will be beneficial. I would love to hear, what would you like to hear more of this year? Um, but just thanks for being here. Thanks for all you do. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful year ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.